the Johnson Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Silver McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Great Day. a neighborhood school just as the recess bell rang, and I stopped and watched as the youngsters came tumbling and racing out of the building like a herd of wild animals. Do you know what I thought about first? The abused floors in that school, and what a job it must be to protect them against that daily onslaught and keep them nice looking. You'll be interested to know that the makers of Johnson Products have developed special wax polishes for floors in schools, office buildings, and hospitals. Floors that take a much heavier traffic beating than your floors at home. The next time you walk down a school or hospital or office building corridor, see if the floors look well cared for. If they do, chances are they're protected with Johnson's wax polish. And just as your Johnson's wax and glow coat save you both work and money, these special polishes developed for heavy traffic use also affect very large savings to the owners and managers of these properties. When you're buying polishes for your home, it will pay you always to insist upon the genuine Johnson's Wax Polishes. Have you ever stood in your front door for half an hour saying goodbye to a visitor who wouldn't go home? Exasperating, isn't it? Well, here at 79 Wistful Vista, with his large feet blotting out the welcome on the map, we find his honor, Mayor Latrivia, who seems to regret leaving Fibber McGee and Molly. Good night, Mayor Latrivia. Uh, good night, Mayor. So nice of you to drop in. Uh, not at all, Mrs. McGee. I'm only sorry your husband won't take the job. You're <laughs> sure you won't reconsider, McGee? No, I'm sorry, Latrivia. I may be the right man for the office and all that, and <laughs> I'd like to serve the city, but my time is so valuable. Being all took up with Chamber of Commerce work. <laughs> yeah, and besides, what does he know about catching dogs? <laughs> well, all right, if that's final, McGee. Good night to you both, and... Oh, my goodness, my briefcase. I left it on the, uh, on the coffee table, I believe. Oh, wait here, Trivial. I'll get it. Right here on the table. Here should be right here. Here's your briefcase, little Trivial. I'll uh, come and see us again sometime. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I will. Good night, Mrs. McGee. I've enjoyed this visit Good very night, much. Good night, Your Honor. I hope... Oh, sure. Come in. Hello there, kid. I just... Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Glad to see you, but I must be going. Hey, wait a minute. But I got to fail and arrest you, too, Mayor. Well, I suppose I can wait one more minute and hear what this gentleman has to say. What gentleman? Who, me? <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, well, here's a proposition, kids. And, Mr. Mayor, I'm selling chances on a turkey for Thanksgiving. Oh, thought... no, no, no. I don't like those things. In the first place, I never gamble. And besides, every time I do it, I lose. <laughs> Besides, you got to wait too long to see if you win. Not on this one, Johnny. Hmm. Draw a number, and if it's the lucky one, I'll tell you right away. How's about it? Only two bits. Uh, here, I'll take one. Well, all right, so will I. Well, now you've talked me into it. Give me one, too, old timer. Okay. One for you, daughter, Mr. Mayor. All right, Johnny, open them up. Okay. Call your numbers, kid. Uh, 27. 85. 207-540-78. Hey! Give me that. That's my social security card. <laughs> Here's your number, Johnny. Oh, 17. Well, did any of us win? Nope. The winning number was 33. But the first fellow to take a chance this morning got that and won the turkey. <laughs> kind of taken all the element of luck out of it, you might say. So don't feel bad about gambling, daughter. You never had a chance anyway. <laughs> That antiquated 
antiquated old gyp artist. Who does he think Oh, that's all right, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Takes all kinds of people to make a world, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that kind ought to go somewhere else and make one of their own. Must you be rushing off so soon, Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Mrs. McGee, I have an appointment with a Miss Meach, a knitting expert. Oh, <laughs> you taking lessons with trivia? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, she's making an ash can for an aunt of mine for Christmas. Go on, how can anybody knit an ash can? <laughs> He said Afghan, McGee. Huh? Afghan. It's a kind of a muffler for your hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good, Mrs. McGee. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But as I say, I have an appointment, so I'll just be... Uh, by the way, do you know where Miss Meach lives it's in the neighborhood? Meach? Meach? Never heard of her, little trivia. Never I. Oh, dear. Well... Uh, may I see your telephone book a moment? I'll look it up. It's uh, right there under the hall table, Mr. Oh, Mayor. thank you. Thank you so much. Let me see. Yeah. Hey, Molly, ain't he ever going to get out of here? What can we do? We can't very well take him by the nap of the neck and throw him down the front steps, can we? Maybe not, but you're putting some awful evil thoughts in my curly little head. <laughs> Personally, I'd well, like to... Well, I found it. Thank you very much, and good night. Well, uh, good night, Mr. Trivial. Good night, and next time you're out this way... Yeah, I'll get it, Molly. McGee's resident? Yes, uh, huh? Oh, is that you, Mert? Yeah, the mayor's right here. It's for you, Your Honor. Oh, good thing I stayed a few seconds. How's every little thing, Mert? Is, eh? What's that, Mert? Your grandmother? Plastered again, eh? Oh, McGee, what on earth happened? Mert's grandmother got pleurisy again. <laughs> they got her plastered from here clear around to here. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Oh, oh yes, the mayor's right here. Okay, I'll tell him, Mert. Goodbye. Uh, who was it, McGee? Your secretary called. Says to remind you that you're laying the cornerstone for the new roundhouse tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I, uh, I completely forgot about that. Well, thank you. Well, I'd better be running along now. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, uh, goodbye Trip. Uh, come in again sometime. Well, thank you, I will. I'll be past here again next week in connection with paving the alley back of your house. Oh, yes, it's in terrible shape now. Oh. You can even see big holes in it from our kitchen window. No. Oh, sure you can. I look My the... goodness, I never really... Oh. Do you mind if I look? Why, uh, well, uh, no, not at all, Mr. Mayor. Right this way and through the hall here. Oh, that guy here. I know one way to get rid of a guy like that, but somebody's sure to find the body. <laughs> Martha Tilton sings My Silent Love. I'd reach for you like I'd reach for a star, worshiping you from afar, living with my silent love. I'm like a flame dying out.
simply must be getting downtown, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I'm afraid I've overstayed my visit a trifle. <laughs> I feel like the man who came to dinner. <laughs> yeah, he broke his leg on the way out, didn't he? <laughs> Here, let me help you down the steps, La Trivia. <laughs> uh, no, 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 never mind. I can make it. Uh, good night, Mrs. McGee. Good night again. Uh, good night, old man. <laughs> Anytime you're down at the city hall, I hope... What's the matter? Is there no hope down at the city hall? <laughs> You have a visitor, Mrs. McGee. A lady is coming up the wall. A lady is coming up the wall. Uh-oh. It's Mrs. Uppington. Mrs. Uh, Uppington? Yes, you remember. She's one of our social leaders. Yes. With a family tree that would make a giant redwood look like a sapling. <laughs> <laughs> and not a good-looking limb on the whole... McGee. <laughs> oh, hi, Uppy. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mrs. McGee. Hello, Abigail. <laughs> Nice to see you again, Mrs. Uppington. Uh, I saw your automobile out in front, Your Honor, and thought I might speak to you for a moment. Am I uh, interrupting? Oh, oh, no, no. The mayor was just leaving, Uppy. <laughs> Three hours later, and you probably would have missed him. Not that we would like to have him spend the rest of the evening with us, what there is of it. <laughs> what was it you wished to consult me about, Mrs. Uppington? Your Honor... The ladies' club, of which I am temporarily chairwoman... Here, woman, have a chair. Temporarily. <laughs> Thank you, no. Our club, Your Honor, has passed a resolution demanding that the city council supply heated water for the horse shop on the east side of City Hall Square. We consider it cruel and inhuman to let those poor animals drink half-frozen water all winter. <laughs> That's a great idea, Uppy. I think they ought to have a box of Kleenex there, too. <laughs> so they can wipe their faces. Mm. Ever notice how they kind of drip all over their puss after they have a McGee? <laughs> McGee, Mrs. Uppington is serious. How can you tell? By the way, she sticks out her chin. <laughs> Which one? The top one? <laughs> no, please. I am serious. Well, Mr. Mayor? Uh, Mrs. Uppington, my compliments to the ladies of your club, whose admirable sentiments do them credit. Please inform them for me that this matter has already been presented to the City Council, and action was deferred indefinitely for the excellent reason that Wistful Vista is not only not a one-horse town, it is a no-horse town. <laughs> well, looks like your campaign had whinnied right in your face, Abigail. <laughs> Why don't you girls get busy and knit some silencers for our manhole covers? I bitterly resent your derisive attitude. It is a situation which demands immediate action. But, madam, in a community which lacks horses, ah, I think... Ah, but we have foreseen that difficulty, Mr. Mayor, and have collected the sum of $87 toward the purchase of a horse. <laughs> Here, take it. Oh, and now perhaps we girls can sleep at night knowing that the poor frozen animal, when we get it, can drink his fill of nice, warm water. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Determined sort of person, isn't she? Oh, she means well, Mr. Mayor. Just a little misguided. You know, last spring she wanted to go around and pick up all the baby robins and give them flying lessons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she even bought time on the radio and called it We the Peep. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, I remember it. Laid an egg. <laughs> oh, well, I simply must be trotting along. Thank you for a very pleasant visit. Oh, not at all, the trivia. Glad you dropped in. Well, so long. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Mayor. Hello, oh, hello, oh. Pepper. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Don't hello. delay the Mayor, Wilcox. He's anxious to be on his way. Yes, we're nearly desperate. I mean, uh, the Mayor has desperately been trying to leave for an hour now, haven't you, Your Honor? Indeed, I have, Mrs. McGee, but I'm glad Mr. Wilcox dropped in. I did wish to see him. Ah. Well, we might as well go back into the living room, folks. <laughs> I've been leaning against this jam so long I can hardly hold my raspberries. Uh, what did you want to see me about, Mr. Mayor? That parking ticket I asked you to fix for me a couple of days ago? That's exactly what I mean, Mr. Wilcox. Well, now, look. The circumstances of the case... The circumstances have nothing whatsoever to do with it. I wish to state categorically. Oh, uh, categorically, my cat. Pipe down a minute and let me explain. Why, Mr. Wilcox, is that any way to talk to the mayor? Why not? Molly, I bawled a cop out once. 
You did? I surely did. I never raised my voice while I was doing it, too, either. And a good thing, because if he'd have heard me, I'd have got 90 days in the pokey. <laughs> What's your excuse, Wilcox? Well, look, I got a rush call from a Mrs. Harrison. She'd only been married a week, and she was all upset, practically crying. Her husband was bringing some friends home from the office, and her kitchen linoleum was a mess. Dull and lifeless, faded colors, dry and patchy looking. She was so ashamed of it, she was almost in tears. Nevertheless, parking next to a fire plug, Mr. Wilcox, is It was the only place to park. This was an emergency. I dashed out there with a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. <laughs> For these rescue parties, you ought to carry a little barrel of it around your neck like a St. Bernard. Quiet, dearie. I want to hear about the little bride. Well, that's about all. I demonstrated to her how quickly Johnson's glow coat would bring out the beauty of the pattern in her linoleum. Yes. How it would restore the luster and brilliance and make it so much easier to keep her kitchen clean and sparkling. And with absolutely no rubbing or buffing. Why, it saved the day for her. So you see, Your Honor, you can't let a measly little parking violation stand against the possible breaking up of a home, the wreck of a happy marriage, simply because... I'm sorry, Wilcox. I didn't understand the circumstances. You may forget the matter on one condition. I know. That I be more careful in the future. No. That you dash out and show my housekeeper about glow coat. My linoleum has got more cracks than the first five minutes of Bob Hope. <laughs> I'll do it right away. So long, folks. <laughs> Ah, that Wilcox is a great guy, Latrivia. <laughs> He's going places. How about you? <laughs> oh, yes, 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 What am I thinking of? Excuse me for procrastinating my departure. Here, here's your briefcase, Mr. Bailey. Oh, thank you. And may I say here's that Here's your I'm... hat. Uh, thank you. And I wish to express Stop my... Stop in deep... again any time you're out this way, Mr. Mayor. Goodbye. Say goodbye, and I only hope... Oh, I'm... not a bit of an old man, not a bit of it. So long now. Glad you dropped in. <laughs> Things kind of get dull around here around midnight. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <they> do. <laughs> Kind of dry, too. Uh, yes, yes. I'm pretty dry myself. Uh, oh. May I trouble you for a glass of water before I leave? Oh, <laughs> of course, Your Honor. Just step out into the kitchen here and... Uh... Oh, that... Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. If that guy takes any longer to pull his freight, he's going to hear from the Interstate Commerce Commission. <laughs> All that dead... Hi, that... mister. Oh, hi, sis. Look, beat it and come back some other time, will you? Why? Uh, we got a visitor who we've been trying to get... He's loud, blah, 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 blah. Trying to get him out of here for two hours. I don't want you delaying him, too. I know. I know. It's Mayor Latrivia, I bet you. How'd you know? I saw his car outside. Oh. See, it's, a, it's a snarky one, too. It's a super-duper. Hey. Easy on the slang, sis. You see what it did to me. <laughs> Why? Well, the use of slang indicates the possession of an inadequate vocabulary. If you can't express yourself in legitimate English, you're sticking your neck out for some slug to tag you as a chumpo. See? <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> I said... My teacher says I'm dandy in English, I bet you. Oh, she does, eh? Hmm? I said she does. That's what? Your teacher says you're dandy in English. She does, she? Aunt Reddit, you just said she did. My teacher says I'm a dandy on colloquialisms, mister. <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I mean, how are you on colloquialisms? Oh, uh, oh, well, I, I... I never went in much for athletics. I bet you don't even know what a colloquialism is, I bet you. Go on, everybody knows that. I'll bet you don't. I do, too. Oh, yeah? Well, then, what is a colloquialism? An alcohol or a what? <laughs> what is it? Well, Webster says the standards of English pronunciation, so far as the standard may be said to exist, mm -hmm. is the usage that now prevails among educated and cultured people. Yes. Though we must frankly admit the fact that at present uniformity of pronunciation is not to be found throughout the English-speaking world. What's male or trivia doing here? <laughs> How did Webster ever hear about Mayor Latrivia? Mm -hmm. Look, sis, please beat it. As it is, the mayor is sticking around here like honey on a hot cake. Like what? Like honey on a... I'm hungry. Well, here's a quarter. Go get yourself a soda. Goodbye. I'm... Oh. Main enough that we got a guest that's allergic to doorknobs. I got to be pestered. Well, McGee, the mayor's going now. Uh, oh. Yes, Mr. McGee, and thank you for all your trouble. Oh, think nothing of it, Latrivia. <laughs> I'm going to miss you around here. 
Well, if I do, I'll take another throw. <laughs> now, McGee, you know he's just kidding you, aren't Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> yes. Quite a touch. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's nice to have seen you. You needn't show me the door, Mrs. McGee. I know the way. All right, Mr. Mayor. Oh, no, 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 not in there. Not that door, Latricia. Why isn't this the front door? No! Straighten out that closet one of these days. <laughs> Come on, Miss Trivia, we've got work to do. The King's Men sing. Thirty more shopping days till Christmas, still have lots of time. I've decided to skip this year, I won't spend the time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick. Only thirty more shopping days till Christmas. Gee, that's not so long. I'm sending out cards this year, then I can't go wrong. I'll have to buy one little present for Aunt Minnie. That can wait a while. I'll find to choose what I got to lose. Still got 20 more shopping days till Christmas. Gee, but it's a bore. Let's see, 20? Well, that's not bad. Still got 20 more. Take your time, take your time. What's the rush about? Stop that hurrying, stop that worrying. Hurry and worry is out. All you gotta do is make a list, decide upon the price to pay. All the dinner and the bother and the lather and the father will be done before Christmas Day. Trust me, I'll be ready then. Golly, Mr. Dooley, there's that man again. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Only five more shopping days till Christmas. Better go buy a tree. Must get Mama that new fur coat. She'll be mad at me. Tick tock, tick tock, tick. Only three more shopping days till Christmas. Lots of things to buy. Should have started it weeks ago. How the time does fly. Almost forgot to get that streamlined train for Junior. Where's my shopping list? Molly and Tony and Michael and Fred, a dolly, a pony, a cyclist said, Hear me calling Santa Claus, I need your help because there's only two little shopping days till Christmas. Now it's almost here. That old feeling gets in your eye, comes the stealing up here inside. Now I'm sorry that Christmas tide comes but once a year. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Okay, La Trivia, you can put your coat back on now. <laughs> That's everything. You know, I really don't think you should have made the mayor put all those things back in the closet, McGee. Oh, it's quite all right, Mrs. McGee. But what puzzles me is, how on earth can you get all that junk into that ste- uh -huh. uh, uh, horrible little two-by-four hole in the wall? Well, it's just an accumulation of little treasures, Mr. Mayor. Sort of a domestic Fort Knox. <laughs> Yeah, it saves time, too. When I come downstairs at night looking for burglars, I know darn well they ain't in there. <laughs> so I get in there. <laughs> well, you, you've got to be gone, the trivia? <laughs> yes, yes, and believe me, I'm... Uh, I'm truly sorry if I've discommoded you. My departure has been... Uh, has been postponed again. I'll bet a cookie. Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. Wimple. You met Mayor Latrivia, Wimp? Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Wimple wrote a poem in honor of my inauguration as mayor, oh. didn't you, Mr. Wimple? Indeed I did, Your Honor. Two verses and 27 choruses. I called it Our Old Gray Mayor, He's Just What He Used to Be. <laughs> Sweetie Face, my wife, always says... Incidentally, how is the little woman, Wimple? The, uh, what, Your Honor? Uh, the little woman. <laughs> You're really not much on dimensions, are you, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> I'm afraid little is a bad description, Your Honor. No, Mrs. Wimple is what we refer to as an Amazon, Trivial. Amazon? Uh, river? Yeah. She's long and wide and with a big mouth. <laughs> Slow moving, but dangerous, and you cross her at your own risk. <laughs> now, Mr. McGee, that's hardly fair to Sweetie Faith. Well... She's really a charming person, really. 
You should see her sitting in the window of an evening, cuddling her pets in her lap. Oh, what are her pets, Wimple? Well, she has one leopard and one pygmy elephant. Once she had a kangaroo that she used to box with, but not anymore. Well, what happened to it, Mr. Wimple? Oh, it got a cauliflower tail and went back to Australia. <laughs> well, uh, was there something we could do for you, Mr. Wimple? No, Mrs. McGee. I just stopped in to pass the time of day. It's 9.45. Good night. <laughs> His wife must be quite a female. <laughs> that, Mr. Mayor, is the understatement of the week. Yeah. She is to ordinary femininity what Kelowna's mustache is to the fuzz on a peach. <laughs> well, it's certainly been pleasant meeting all your friends, but all good things must come to an end, you know. Yes, that's what the hickory switch said when it was carried into the woodshed. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's your patent briefcase again, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, and uh, good night. You better get going, Latrivia. It sounds like rain. <laughs> and let us know when you're going to drop by again, and we'll build on a guest room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very... Uh, oh, I'd better wait. It might be for me again. Why, certainly. Why should anybody be calling us here? <laughs> Answer it, McGee. Okay. If it's for you, Latrivia, shall I tell them you've left? <laughs> well, why should you tell them that? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a dreamer, I guess. <laughs> McGee's resident. Who? Yes, he's here, but unless it's important, I don't want to... What say? Huh? Who? It is? Oh, my gosh. Hey, La Trivia, your secretary's calling. Says the city hall is flooded. Flooded? Oh, my goodness. Tell her I'll be right down. Hello. He'll be right down. Goodbye. Come on, Molly. Where? Well, let's go with him and see if we can... Yes, help. yes, yes. Do come. Oh, this is terrible. Come on. Come on. He's flooded. Where's the fire? Oh, where's the... What's it? Uh, I don't understand this. Everything seems perfectly normal around here. Well, it does to me, too. McGee. Huh? I thought you said my secretary said the city hall was flooded. Yeah, but you didn't let me finish. She said it was flooded with phone calls wanting to know if you'd be back tonight. Well, heavenly day. <laughs> McGee, was this just a trick to get me out? <laughs> ah, La Trivia. That's why you're such a wonderful mayor. <laughs> you catch on like a burr on a beagle. <laughs> it takes more than brick and mortar and shingles to make a home. Yes, that's pretty obvious. It's a thing every woman knows, especially if she's got children. You know, it's pretty important for children to like their home, to be proud of it, and want to bring their friends there. How do smart women go about making their homes attractive? Not necessarily by spending a lot of money. No, you achieve that home-like quality by all the little things you do. The good taste you show in arranging your things. By adding the beauty and protection that wax polish offers with genuine Johnson's Wax. The rich beauty that comes with regular application of Johnson's Wax to your floors, furniture, and woodwork is impossible to obtain in any other way. It costs little, it saves much, both in wear and tear and in actual housework. Women who know call it protective housekeeping. And to play safe, they always buy the genuine Johnson's Wax, paste, cream, or liquid. Hey, Molly. Yes, dearie? What were we doing when Latrivia moved in on us? Planning our Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yeah, Thanksgiving dinner. Did you get a big plump gobbler? Twenty years ago, and this year he's going to eat chicken. Huh? <laughs> oh. Good night. This is Hollow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. And may we urge you once more to join the Red Cross. Put your heart in their work. Good night. What product does two things at once? It's Johnson's Car New, the modern auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. It used to take hard work and cost real money to do these two jobs, 
But with car new, you can do them in half the time. Polishing is a good start on your car, so why not get a can of Johnson's Car New this week? This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. This is Chicago WMAQ at 10 seconds before 9 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watts Time. Bulova, gift of a lifetime. WMAQ, 